Nicholas Braun, welcome to Australia and welcome to The Drop. Great to be here, yeah. It looks like you've had a pretty fun time. You went to the F1, I saw you had some croissants yesterday. What's your general impression of Australia so far? I did have some loon croissants yeah. yesterday. Uh, those, I mean, we we tried three times, I think, to get those. Okay. The line was is insane to get those croissants. Yeah. Uh, they make you wait for it. They really make you earn it. Um, but no, I mean, it's great to be here. The, the, the race was incredible. Never been to a Formula One race. Um, just super exhilarating to be around. But generally, yeah, loving it. Wish I was here for a lot longer. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun place. Um, of course, you're here for Succession Season 4, yeah. the fourth and final season of the show. Um, you play Cousin Greg, who I guess, you know, he comes into the family as a kind of long-lost cousin of the Roys and then finds himself kind of slowly working his way up to the middle. And then you cut to season four and it's a kind of different Greg we meet. His hair is slicker, his suit is better. He still has the same, you know, elements that made him who he is. What do you think is the biggest change that Greg has gone through from season one to four? Yeah, aside from salary, <laughs> which has grown immensely it's true. somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's, I think he's um, grown a bit of confidence he's grown not maybe a bit maybe more than that uh you know grown a bit, a bit of an edge he's not so naive he's not so clueless and and um and so that's i, I like that i think it's a good good progression you want to see him affected by this world and hmm. maybe unfortunately in a bad way, uh, he's he's been turned a bit, but yeah, because yeah, I've always nice. found that funny because I, I I always saw Greg kind of as the audience surrogate. Like he comes in and he's you know kind of how most people would be walking into this world that is so foreign, but it also would be impossible not to get corrupted. Yeah, I think if you want to stay in this world, if you want to stay within this the, this tight knit group, you kind of have to subscribe to the way that they are and then the way that they act and 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 behave so uh so yeah he is the guy that's dropped in but if he didn't play the game a bit he'd be out um so i think it shows that he's ambitious and it also shows that this world is kind of contagious mm. like being this close to this much power and this much importance globally you know yeah, to, to, to influence people in their homes, you know, and put things in front of them that, that will change, you know, um, the way they uh, think, the way they think. And yeah, exactly. So, so when you're close to that, I think it's probably, uh, constantly exciting and you don't want to leave that. And I guess if he's learned to play the game, arguably his coach might be Tom there, you know, almost this inseparable duo now. And you obviously yeah. spend a lot of time, uh, with Matthew McFadden. Was that a natural chemistry or did you guys kind of consciously make an effort to be like, maybe we should hang out on the weekend to natural just it just happened very quickly i think the first scene that we have uh that's you know obviously weird where he's asking me if i want to kiss him mm. uh you know that pretty much quickly establishes what this relationship is this kind of weird hazing uh <laughs> hot and cold you know uncomfortable relationship uh but matthew and i we'd never met each other never worked together you know so it was it was a pretty quick uh we clicked right away yeah perfect and already this season we've had a lot of lines that you kind of hear them and you know the internet will embrace them almost instantly like you know rummage to fruition or terrifyingly moseying do you like given the way the show is developed do you almost do like a table read and you might read a line and be like oh that's one that people are gonna get around I try as hard as I can to not think about what an audience will think or mm -hmm. how, how the internet will snap up a line and make it into a meme or a gif or whatever. Uh, it's, it's hard because people do love it and the writing's so good and they give us stuff like that. Um, but really, we know when something is truly like, you know, like Matthew and I read the script and we're like, how the f are we going to get through this line? Mm. Like, how are we going to do this scene? We're, we're going to break. Uh, is there much breaking on set? Constantly. Yeah, right. Constantly. It's the hardest part. I can imagine. Because I'm so, I don't want to let the writing down, if you know what I mean. Mm. It's so good. There's so much potential. It is for an audience. Yeah, obviously. So 
I'm like, oh, people will love this if we get it right. You know, we it's like want a pressure. Th- yeah, there's a pressure to it. It's like this is so good. So, you, so I get upset at myself when I when I break, but it's impossible. But I did wonder how if that's that must have changed a lot because it feels like with Succession that we're at the final season, but the ecosystem around the show now is enormous. Like. You know, like this is a podcast. There's like succession podcasts. Mm-hmm. The next day, all the, you know, like gifts are online. The quotes are everywhere. Like there is a full afterlife of this show on the internet, which didn't exist when it started. No. And that must kind of creep in on set. Like, are you, how conscious is the cast of that? I don't think we talk about it at all. Like it's, it's something we're aware of and it's something we participate in. And I think there is a demand for for all of us to talk about it and do appearances and things, but we don't, we don't talk about it. It's, it's like the work is separate. You know, we're not, we're not thinking about its popularity when we do a scene that doesn't help us do a good job on set. And so I think we all compartmentalize and put the, the, the popularity and the, the, yeah, all that stuff we put, the it, you know, internet around. stuff, the noise around, we, we put it to the side. It is funny though, the show has struck such a chord on the internet and, and with people in a particular way, do you have a theory as to why Succession has broken through at the particular time that it did break through? I, I guess things in the last eight or so years have have changed politically, and uh, you know what Fox News and those types of uh, media outlets have become. Uh, I think this show is more relevant now than it would have been 15 years ago. Mm. Um, things are just so much more obviously controlled and, and have a certain agenda. And because of that, and because we all know it, this show is kind of like this, you know, peek behind the curtain. What? How does that act? How does it come to be this way? And, yeah. And um, how do we get the headlines that we get on our phones? And and what are those conversations and who are those people? And so it's, we don't actually ever get to meet them. Yeah. We hear about them and we see pictures of them and we hear about Rupert Murdoch, but we, we're not, pr- he hardly even speaks. Like you don't even know what his voice is for the most, you know. Yeah. Americans he used to, say, he used to sound he, Australian here, once upon a time. Yeah, here you, you know more than we would, but. but uh, I think he's kind so, of, yeah, he's, his voice has changed now as he's become like a naturalized. He used to sound quite ochre, like maybe like me, but now he probably sounds more like you. Yeah, I th- I think it's I think people want to know what that is, and and unfortunately, it's oftentimes a pretty ugly uh, world to look to look at. Yeah, I think there is that that element of voyeurism is a big part of the appeal for lots of people, and also on top of that, what you, when you do see, it's you know kind of scary, but sometimes it's also kind of comical that this is how it might be working. These enormous yeah, yeah. like large scale decisions. <clears throat> yeah, I mean not every. In any arena, there are people who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, in any company, in any place, they're just like trying to keep their job. Yeah. And so that happens even in this, you know, massive. Yeah. Uh, Lots of failing up. Yeah, failing up. People who you're like, how did they get a promotion? Mm. Uh, and and oh, look at them. They're hanging out with the boss more or going out for drinks m- more with him. And you could say that about Greg. It's like... Greg's close to Tom, and therefore he just keeps getting the upgrades. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah, it's such it's such a kind of amazing dynamic, and you know, as an ensemble cast, it's amazing performances across the board. A lot has been made of the different approaches actors take, and you know, we've read about Jeremy Strong's method, and we've read about Brian Cox going, you know, kind of full Brian Cox. What's your approach to making Greg? I, th- I. You know, I, I take a lot of cues from the writing, the way that he speaks and what he does and how he thinks. Um, I always wanted him to start off quite naive. I mean, he, you meet him and he's literally in a dog, stoned, like a puppy vomiting. dog, yeah, costume. Yeah, yeah. And, and stoned and vomiting out of, out of the mask. Uh, so I wanted to slowly, you know, incrementally like, like grow him up and see how he could be affected by this world. And, and so, it, you know, I think about suits a lot and what's the cut of the suit, or, you know, in season four, 
he's learned that a tailored suit is going to make him look more professional mm -hmm. than uh, than what he used to wear in season one. And and you got to spend money on ties and you got to spend money on shoes and. Uh, and so the physical stuff is important mm. and his posture becoming a little better Trader. in season four and those kinds of things to, for me to be intentional about helps. Uh, and I, I like to learn my lines the night before. I don't like to like, like you know, know like, it too week, well. Two week intensive, like getting the script down. No, I don't need that. I really, I'm, I'm lucky to have a good memory so I can remember, mm -hmm. remember my lines um, quite easily. But I like to surprise myself in scenes. Like I think that's when I'm at my best. And as Greg, sort of being on the, the edge of not knowing what to say next is I think a big part of the character. And is it really strange then, because obviously you all take your different approaches in to then have to like meld with all the different other approaches that are going on. Like obviously with someone mm -hmm. like Jeremy and his method and someone like Brian, do you just like, how, how does that affect you when you go to work? I think all the actors, you know, the people that stick around on the show and that Jesse continues to write for have a very specific style, character, and they don't, you know, give it up and they don't sort of like sit in the background, like they know who they are. And, and so Brian, Jeremy, Roman, you know, Kieran, they're all very, uh, you know, they're fully realized and, and they're in their zone. So I think we all meet each other and, and trust each other that we're all gonna bring exactly that, that character to it. So a lot of different styles, mm. but I think we all just know what our, our lane is. And you mentioned kind of trusting the writing and the writing is obviously so like, there's a few shows that, that manage to do what Succession does and it does it so well. What, like who, I'm curious, who do you think gets the best lines? Because there's a big debate on this podcast about like each week we do like, oh, what's the best line? And lots of people are like, mm -hmm. oh, it's always Roman or oh, it's often Kendall. Like, who do you think gets the best lines? I think it's Roman. Okay. It's a popular he, answer. Yeah, he gets, I mean, the stuff they give, give him. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, how do they think of this? <laughs> how, you know, he's so sharp. It's just, uh, yeah, the writers are on another level with, with Roman's line. The thing I find about Roman's line particularly is that they seem to stuff so many, like he cuts like four people in one sentence. Yep. It's, amazing. it's like a layered insult. Yeah, and also they give him stuff that on the page, you're like, how is Kieran gonna pull this off? <laughs> like, this is t so clever, but he does it in this way that kind of makes fun of the thing he's saying. He's mm. like, this is a f stupid f thing I'm saying. <laughs> and it's, you know, so he, he just does it. He just found the perfect way to deliver these super sharp lines, incredibly sharp lines. You, of course, your character, Greg, has also lots of iconic lines. Is there one, I'm sure there are a million that people say to you, but is there one that you recall reading for the first time and you were like, oh, that's well in congress you know the stuff in congress like that was there was a, we actually shot a longer scene but that's that's the first part of the scene but that that whole conversation was perfect i mean jesse showed it to me the night before we shot i wasn't actually i never knew there was a congress scene okay um but but is that a common thing to find out just like the no it's not very common uh, you know, he'll give us revisions and things on set, and, and that's very common. Yeah. Every scene, he'll give us some alternate lines and things. Yeah. Uh, but that, he came to me the night before, and he was like, we have this Congress set, and we could come back to this in a couple weeks if you, f you know, feel like you need time, but here's the scene, and, and do you want to do it tomorrow? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> Let's fucking do this. It was so funny. He was just, he showed it to me on his laptop, and... He's like, I'll send it to you if you're ready to do it tomorrow. I was like, it's, this is really funny. We were just cracking up reading it together and, uh, and that, was, that was it, so. I'm so glad you said yes because it's like one of the, I find that, partic that particular line so hard. I try and like quote it back to my friends and I find it so hard because it's so like confusing. So yeah, to, to yeah. nail it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. How many times did you blow it? <laughs> no, I mean the point is to blow it. Yeah, yeah, that's true actually. Yeah, so, so we, I probably did it a handful of times it just um it just came out i just 
just to have, you just have to have a lot of thoughts going and you just grab a couple of them. So, be, so it is. So, you know, and, and, um, and try to kind of ram them together. To, yeah, the, the point is just say the most vague but polite and eloquent thing. And uh, so it was, it was perfectly written and just, just so funny. And it was nice to have no time to really prepare it, mm. to be like Greg and just have to overnight all of a sudden be in Congress and be in that room with 100 and 200 extras and 20 cameras and the whole thing. So they did a good job of... of making that set yeah. super pressurized and intimidating and I was like, all that pressure would just like feed into exactly what the tone of the scene was supposed to be yeah and i remember well the night before i wanted to watch some congressional testimonies mm. and i watched mark zuckerberg oh, yeah. uh, do one I, f I feel like he's been as there far a as congressional times, testimonies go his is a good one i've i've also watched it yeah because he's he, he it's a different situation but but he came in and he did this very calculated, like water bottle pour. Hmm. I think I might have done that in the scene, or at least in some takes. And I was like, "That's a thing that you come in and do. It's like you can't f that up." And I'm going to pour myself a glass of water, and that'll show that I am a person who's ready to. It's like you're in you control. Know, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. They're like, don't. I'm comfortable here. I. <laughs> I just poured myself a drink in front of you. Yeah. Uh, so. It's like, I'm here, I'm hydrated, now I'm ready to be grilled. Yes, yes. I'm ready to be here as long as it takes to drink this drink. Uh, yeah. That is amazing. It seems like, you know, generally on set, it, it does seem to be a super collaborative place. And, and like you said, you know, Jesse is handing you a scene that would go on to become such a famous scene. You know, we, we recently uh, at our masthead ran an interview with Sarah Snook and she talked about, you know, the final table read not really even knowing what was going to happen and you know it's an open-ended ending in her eyes and then you have Matthew McFadden saying oh it's a, it's it's an ending that really works what was your kind of like gut response to reading the end of succession i think it's totally unexpected it's uh i think it feels right i think it feels right it's not, it's, you, you can't predict it. And, and yet it, it felt like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the vibe like in the room? When we read the script, the yeah. table redraft, um, it was kind of sad, honestly. Like some, some of the cast were pretty emotional and um, yeah, I think, I, th I think it felt, you know, it felt sad that we're never gonna be in one of these table read rooms. You know, we're not gonna do this again. Uh, we're not gonna, some of us won't see each other again for a long time. Mm. Some of us may never work together again. Um, Jesse sort of at the helm and with Mark Mylod and all the producers and all the writers around. It was, uh, yeah, it was kind of horrible. Like, yeah. okay, wow, we're gonna, we're gonna stop doing this thing that right now still feels great to be involved know, in it's like why are we stopping again yeah but the script is is so good and it hits on every level and and honestly the, this season i think especially the, the last the back half of it it's mm. just the pace and and the importance and and it's just all like jacked up it's, a, it's another level of the show yeah i found that this season has been like tonally different it feels like it's just a bit more, everything feels a bit heavier and a bit more serious. Like it's still such a, you know, it's still such a funny show and we get the Tom and Greg scenes and they still mm -hmm. like work and everything. But it, the first two episodes anyway, it just feels like, oh, it's really, like you can, the stakes are clearly risen. Uh, yeah, I felt that too. Watching the first episode, it was, there's so much happening. Yeah. You, you, you know, they set up so much in the first episode. So you you know you kind of remember there's so many dynamics and 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 how do you you know how do Tom and Shiv where do they go from here and uh, I mean I don't have to run through the, like the grocery list of what's happening in the episode but yeah. but it did feel like wow we have so there's so many heavy uh, things here and this show just feels like weighty and important mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the season is, yeah, it's absolutely incredible, I think. And obviously for you now, you've, you know, you're on the kind of life after succession path, I suppose. Uh, I know you're in Cat Person, which is the kind of 2017 New Yorker article um, yeah. with another Australian, Geraldine, 
who's a great actress. Oh yeah, she's Australian. Yeah, she's Australian. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's very talented. She's a very talented actress. Yeah, she's yeah. great. She's from Sydney too. Oh, cool. Um, but that's a very different role to Greg. And is that something you're conscious of? Like having been in a show like Succession that is, you know, obviously such a blessing that people will know you from that. Are you now looking and being like, okay, what is my anti-Greg path after this? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's, yeah, I don't want to do Greg again. Hmm. I, you know, I for a lot of reasons. One is just, I, I've i been doing him. I feel like we mind everything that you can with this character. I mean, if Jesse wanted to write more, if he did wanted to do another if season. He's like, I'm gonna, I've got a show called Greg again. And yeah, I think that'd be really fun to keep it going. Maybe we'll do it in 10 years. Maybe yeah. we'll do, give him a break and see where Greg's at in 10 years. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I, like I've seen all the spin-off chat. I just feel like Having read everything Jesse Armstrong says, it's not really his style. It's not. It's not his style. But yeah, there have been plenty of spinoffs that are successful. Like you would love to see a Greg and Tom kind of like running an Airbnb in like upstate New York or something. But that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. We I'll, could do that. I'll tell them about that. I'm happy yeah. to work on this as well. This is my pitch to you now. Cool. Yeah, I mean, write like a pilot script and Perfect. shoot it over, and yeah, let's get it in front of them. And just lastly, you know, I was curious. Do you feel that you, because you have been so close to this character? Do you see your arc almost similar in a way? Like I know you did lots of like the kind of Disney Channel original movies as a, as a young actor and then you find yourself on this show like Succession, it becomes the zeitgeist show of the last like five years. And, you know, because I was watching in preparation for this interview, I do have lots of research. I watched your like a first appearance on Colbert and yes. you told that anecdote and it's such a like, it's like a beautiful interview really. And then I watched you on Kimmel last week and like even seeing the different ways that you kind of presented yourself, do you feel like there's a similar arc with you and Greg? Yeah, I haven't thought about it, but I think there is. I've been doing this for a big part of my life. I made my first movie at 11 years old. So this is something I've always loved and continued to love and 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 want for myself and uh, and the thing with being an actor is it's it's a frustrating path but it, and it's a long path and you just don't know what's going to hit and I didn't know that succession would become succession mm -hmm. you know you you make a pilot I mean you get a part. I'm so, I, I loved it when I got the audition sides. You shoot a pilot, you don't know if it's gonna become a, a series. You do the first season. We weren't this out of the gate. Yeah. You know, it took years to become this thing. So there have been movies and TV pilots I've made before that I'm like, this is gonna be This is the huge. one, yeah, and this is gonna hit. Yeah, and, and it just doesn't happen. And so. they just don't air and they become part of the kind of littered, you know, yeah, Hollywood Nobody forward. sees them. Yeah. yeah, they just go away and, and live you know, uh, did you have a kind of somewhere. slightly more like strong gut feeling after reading the script? I mean, like, oh, this is this is kind of rare. This show, yeah, yeah. I'd never read anything like this. Mm. the The tone of the pilot was very specific, and it was super dense. Like the amount of you know, there's a lot of business lingo. There is, and, and yeah, financial talk and. Uh, it was, I remember having to read it like three or four times, just trying to get it. Because I understood the Greg stuff, I understood who he was in this world, but to, to yeah, get, to get who Kendall was and what the, you know, the trust and, and, yeah. and Marsha, you know, you know still, all even that like, stuff. We're now like just, four seasons in and I still find myself being like, pausing to be like, okay, so, Waystar is gonna be like merged with Gojo, but then there'll be like, mm -hmm. they'll keep it, like it's so, it doesn't really give anything away for free or hold your hand through that type of stuff. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. The, the de yeah, Jesse definitely wants an audience to figure out uh, a lot of things for themselves. But it's also so well researched that you can sort of just trust like this is real. Yeah. You know, this is this is how it goes. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't, it, it, it feels that, it feels authentic. And so even if you don't put in the time to figure it out, you're like, okay, this is probably legit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. Well, look, thank you so much for joining the drop. Uh, looking forward to Greg again, obviously. That's going to be massive. Yeah, enjoy the rest. <laughs> it's, um, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining the drop. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having Too me. Easy.